what led them to be who they are Rosalind Franklin the black lady of dna science and daily life cannot be separated science for me gives a partial explanation of life these are the words of rosalind franklin dna is the basic structural and functional unit of every life so the discovery of the structure of dna has always been very important to the mankind Crick and Watson are considered the pillars in the discovery of DNA but there is a smart and hard working woman hand behind this discovery the lesser known Rosalind Franklin she was so gifted at x-ray crystallography that Watson and Crick's DNA model would have been impossible without her and her results were used by them in a questionable and poorly acknowledged manner Rosalind L. C. Franklin was an English chemist and X-ray crystallographer whose works on the structural elucidation of DNA, RNA, coal and graphite are still appreciable. Franklin was born on 25th of July 1920 in 50 Chipstow Villas, Notting Hill, London. Her father was Ellis Arthur Franklin, a politically liberal London merchant banker who taught at the city's working men's college and her mother was Muriel Frances Valley Rosalind was the elder daughter and the second child in the family of five children her father's uncle was Herbert Samuel who was the home secretary in 1916 and the first practicing Jew to serve in the British cabinet Many of her family members were active members in frontline authorities. Her family was actively involved with the Working Men's College where her father taught the subjects of electricity, magnetism and history of the Great War, later becoming the vice principal. From early childhood, Franklin showed exceptional scholastic abilities. At age 6, she joined her brother Roland at Norland Play School, a private day school in west london at that time her aunt describes her as rosalind is alarmingly clever she spends all her time doing arithmetic for pleasure and invariably gets all her sums right at age 9 she entered a boarding school lindore school for young ladies in sussex she was 11 and she went to st paul school in hammersmith west london one of the few girls school in london that taught physics and chemistry she was excellent in science and topper in class when she was 15 she desired to become a scientist in 1938 franklin went to newnham college cambridge to study chemistry there she met the spectroscopist bill price who worked with her as a laboratory demonstrator and who later became one of her senior colleagues at king's college london In her last year at Cambridge, she met a French refugee, Adrienne Vale, a former student of Marie Curie, who had a huge influence on her life and career and helped her improve her spoken French. Franklin's research career began in physical science. She was awarded a research fellowship at Newnham College, with which she joined physical chemistry laboratory of the University of Cambridge. to work under Ronald George Rayford Norrish who later won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in her one year of work there she did not have much success as described by his biographer Norrish was obstinate and almost perverse in argument overbearing and sensitive to criticism he could not decide for her what to work upon and at that time was succumbing to heavy drinking Then she resigned from there and joined as an assistant and research officer at British Coal Utilization Research Association (BCURA) in 1942. She studied the porosity of coal using helium to determine its density. Through this, she discovered the relationship between the fine constrictions in the pores of coal and the permeability of the porous space. by concluding that substances were expelled in order of molecular size 
as temperature increased she helped classify coals and accurately predict their performance for fuel purposes and for production of wartime devices such as gas mask this work was the basis of her phd thesis the physical chemistry of solid organic colloids with special reference to coal for which the university of cambridge awarded her a phd in 1945 Franklin went back to England in 1950 to pursue fellowship in the lab of a biophysicist named John Randall at King's College London. Though Randall originally wanted her to build up the lab's work on crystallizing and imaging proteins, Maurice Wilkins, the chief lab assistant, suggested that she work on DNA. Wilkins was planning to work together with Franklin but a misunderstanding turned their relationship sour. Instead, Franklin worked with graduate Gozalik to take x-ray images of the DNA. By 1952, Franklin could capture the famous photograph 51 which showed an x-ray diffraction image of DNA using her x-ray crystallography technique. They discovered two forms of DNA. a wet form and a dry form franklin spent a year trying to discover which structure was correct the wet form appeared to have two chained helix structure watson and crick were also trying to solve the same at university of cambridge cavendish laboratory in 1953 wilkins showed them the x-ray image of dna photograph 51 and the summary of unpublished work which he had submitted to the medical research council and later watson and crick could elucidate the structure of dna which led them to have the nobel prize in 1962 watson and crick published the structure of dna in the journal nature they never told franklin they had seen her photograph franklin was just few steps away from figuring it out goslin and franklin published x-ray findings in the same issue of the same journal but the credit went to Watson, Crick and Wilkins. She died 4 years before the Nobel Prize was awarded when she was just 37 years old due to the complications that arose from ovarian cancer. After finishing her work on the DNA, she turned into tobacco mosaic virus and polio viruses. She was an inveterate traveler on the global conference circuit and a collaborator with international partners. The real tragedy of Rosalind Franklin's life is not that she was robbed of a Nobel Prize, rather it is science that was robbed of another 20 to 40 years of Franklin's research presence. She remains an inspiration to many women scientists. and her work on the structure of dna is critical to modern molecular biology and genomics research without rosalind franklin's groundbreaking work it may have taken another decade before the double helix structure of dna had been fully realized